my topic is asurava asura swadhyaya and asura vadhyaya so uh, there are certain characters in hindu uh, mythology and literatures uh, who are usually connected with inauspicious and dark things they they are called asuras they are the descendants of kashiba to his wife didi and the hindu mythology usually portrays asuras as enemies of gods uh, during vedic period they were not having a ne- negative connotation but later hindu texts they were exclusively to indicate beings opposed to gods and these characters are usually portrayed as oversized darkish proportions uh, one night uh, protruding teeth uh, disfigured face humped back pot bellied multi handed multi headed or with no head at all prahlada bali abana ravana sharabha kumbha mahakala das and others are a few renowned asuras but uh, on certain occasions the negatively connotated asuras are shown as maestros in musical instruments uh, ravana banasura and suravatma are skilled in playing musical instruments such as veena amiravu and timila so first we can go through ravana he is the lord of rakshasa and the rakshasa king of lenga he is the son of uh, sage viswara and uh, rakshasi kaikeshi uh, he actually his original name was uh, dashagriva which means 10 neck or 10 head Uh, he lay, got his name ravana when he tried to uh, uplift the mount kailasa uh, he made a large scream and him see got the name ravana he is often uh, often portrayed with 10 heads which symbolizes his knowledge of vedas and shastras and he is an excellent veena player and even the sign of his flag had a picture of veena on it in sculptural art uh, ravana playing uh, veena is usually associated with the ravana shaking kailasa theme and the story is narrated in the uttarakhand of ramayana the story goes like this after the victory over kubera ramana was returning to lenka in his pushpa vimana and he spotted a beautiful place but the chariots could not fly over it uh, he met uh, the shiva's monkey faced dark attendant nandi and asked the reason nandi informed that uh, his uh, lord and parvati were enjoying romance on the mountain and no one was allowed to pass so he decided to approach the mountain kailasa and he pulled his 20 arms uh under uh, kailasa uh, and started lifting it uh, lord pressed the mountain uh, in place with his big toe be, resulted in trapping uh, his hands beneath it so he gave a loud cry and in pain and finally he sang some uh, hymns praising lord shiva for a thousand years and shiva only uh, not only forgave ravana but also granted him an invisible sword and there is an additional story in the tevaram the tamil shaiva work the story says that ramana cut off one of his head and built a veena from it and he used his tendons for the strings and and uh, began uh, singing praises of shiva for a thousand years uh, this veena is called as ravan hatha uh, we can see a modern art uh, showing ramana playing ravan hatha in the ramana angraha murti theme here we can see that ramana is playing uh, a veena which is uh, having one of his head and the other part is having his uh, palm and he is playing and uh, singing hymns of lord shiva uh, for means to forgive him the same theme is uh, seen in uh, some other temples temples in south india uh, they are from the someshwara temple of karnataka and the uh, sujindra temple in both these temples he is shown as playing the uh, instrument veena that's the ravan hatha which is having his head and his hand and the, there is uh, one image means there is also Im- uh, images of means sculptures of ravana playing ravana hatha from sri lanka that from the koneshwaran temple of sri lanka uh, the last one that's the ravana playing veena from rajasthan uh, which is kept in the delhi museum there uh, it's not represented at a, as a hand it's like a stick like instrument that's the uh, stick sita and uh, we can call we can either call it as a rudra veena because rudra veena is a kind of stick sita and some legend says that uh, when ravana tried to uh, uh, means ravana made the veena rudra uh, veena to praise lord shiva and this is the instrument ravana hatha uh, legend says that hanuman picked this uh, instrument and brought it back to north india after the end of the rama ravana war and incidentally this instrument is only played in parts of rajasthan and gujarat but interestingly uh, a malayalam sandesha kavi uh, means the uh, message poem unnili sandesham uh, mentions uh, a musical instruments ravana kai uh, the message poem is from the 14th century uh, the ravana kai means uh, ravana's hand but at present uh, there is uh, no such instrument in kerala which is named as uh, ravana kai 
which means that once the instrument was popular in South India as well as Kerala, but it got extinct. It's a dub out type of veena, and we can see a, a, a musician family playing Ravan Hatha, and then there is a video of a musician playing Ravan Hatha. So that's about Ravana. Now let's go, go to the other Asura who is called as Banasura. He's the eldest son of Mahabali and he belongs to the race Daitya. Uh, mythology says that he has a thousand arms and during the war between Banasura and Lord Krishna, he was helped by Lord Shiva, Subramanya, Ganesha, Agni and others. This is because through penance and prayer offered to Lord Shiva, he secured a boon that Shiva himself would personally guard him his city of Soniputpura. Bhagavad Purana says that when uh, Shiva danced his uh, Tandava, Banasura had pleased the Lord by playing a thousand percussion instruments of every known kind with his thousand hands. Uh, Shiva Purana mentions that Bana uh, propitiated uh, Shiva during his Tandava dance by the music in accompaniment of the instrumental music played by his thousand hands. Shiva Purana also mentions that Banasura became one of the Ganas of Lord Shiva when he got delighted by his Tandava dance. In sculptural art, uh, he is shown as playing a miravu, that's a traditional percussion instrument of Kerala in Nadaraja panel. He is identified by his protruding tweets. Uh, usually in Nadaraja panel, uh, the uh, percussion instrument is usually either handled by Vishnu, uh, Bringi or uh, Banasura. When Banasura is uh, shown in sculpture, he is uh, shown with his protruding teeth. And here we can see that Banasura is playing uh, Midavu, a traditional kind of uh, drum in Kerala, which is having a cage-like structure and a pot-shaped structure. Uh, the player plays uh, with both his hands on the neck of the instrument, and he's also having a damaru and a wooden clapper. Uh, the same uh, Banasura is seen in the Hill Palace Museum and the Etumaru Temple, but here uh, the cage is absent, but uh, the instrument is again identified as uh, means Midavu, because uh, here, there is another instrument called Khadam, uh, which is a port shaped instrument. Uh, but uh, when we play Khadam, we play on the belly side, means the side of the belly part of the port. But he, we can clearly see that uh, Bana is playing on the neck part of the instrument. So both these uh, instruments is, means the one from Hill Palace and from the Etumano Temple is identified as uh, Mirau. And interestingly, there is another image means uh, from um, the Mysore school, where Banasura is showing, uh, shown as playing a veena, tamburu, a sitar, uh, damaru, and a kunsel and a pair of cymbal. And this is the miravu, a traditional uh, drum of Kerala. It's the main uh, accompanying percussion instrument for the art forms of Kutu, that's the discourse of Purana, and Kudi Atam, a Sanskrit drama prevailed in Kerala. It has a, a egg like shape, and the instrument is placed in a cage. The top portion of the instrument has a cylindrical neck and a wet calf skin tightened around its mouth. At the bottom end, there is a small hemispherical projection. The first one is uh, a, an artist playing mid -out. Then there is a video where an artist is uh, demonstrating the instrument. That's about Banasura. Next, the next musician in the Asura clan is Shura Patma. He's the brother of Taragasura and the son of Kashiba and Surasai. According to Tamil tradition, he was defeated by Lord Muruga and became the Vahana of Muruga. That's the peacock. Uh, the Kanda Purana, that's the Tamil iteration of uh, Skanda Purana, described the story of uh, Shura Patma. The origin of the musical instrument, Tibila, that's a hourglass shaped drum is associated with him. The legend goes like this. Once Shura Patma was witnessing the Pradosha Sandhya Tandava of Lord Shiva, and he expressed his desire to have Lord Damaru to keep Tala for the dance. A Lord advised him to make an instrument by himself. He made a much bigger and longer instrument, which did not give a proper sound. He approached Lord Shiva, and Lord pointed out the absence of a hole in the middle of the instrument. Uh, Lord, with his own little finger, made a hole on the instrument. And when the skins were fixed and played in Played, it sounded perfect. 
uh, lord shiva was pleased and told him that he can join uh, nandi who plays madalam for lord's dance but shurapatma play, playing timla is uh, not observed in uh, visual art but we can discuss about the instrument timla it's an elongated hourglass shaped drum the word the name is called as timla which is derived from the word timi uh, which means fish uh, the instrument is suspended over the shoulders and the playing is done with both the bare palms the leather used is of cow hoof uh, fixed to a sort of cane rings found mentioned even in the tamil it classic silapadigaram but it's uh, now the use is only confined to kerala and uh, there is a video of a group of timla players playing timla so those are the asuras who are musicians in the asura clan but there is an, an interesting uh, thing uh, an instrument is called as asura vada that means the demon, demonic instrument that's a chenda it's the most traditional drum of kerala and it is popularly addressed as asura vadya since it cannot go in harmony due to its loud and rigid sound it's a tall he- hollow cylinder of instrument and is covered on both sides with cowhide the name chenda is derived from the uh, word uh, jamta that's the sound made by it the, there are two sides of chenda and these two sides are tuned differently the right side that's the valantala there are seven layers of leather and it is loosely stretched to get a bass sound then there is the left side that is the idamtala made of one piece of leather uh, and it is tightened to get a treble sound mainly used for tantric worship and there are two styles in playing idamtala that is either the player will be playing using the two sticks or played using one bare palm and one stick uh, this is the various stages of making chenda initially a hollow uh, cylinder is uh, made from a jackfruit uh, tree and uh, the uh, canes are made in round shape and the uh, leather is stretched over the uh, cane it means the circular shape the cane and then this is fixed on the cylindrical pa- part of the chenda with the help of uh, ropes then the stick is made and then there comes the instrument chenda uh, in sculpture art uh, all these three styles means the idam tala uh, and the valam tala means there are two variations in playing idam tala and one very vari- one style of playing valam tala that's the right side uh, in idam tala that's the left side the player will be either use uh, using two sticks that's seen in the chowara temple of ernakulam temple here we can see that the player is holding two sticks in his hand and he is playing the cylindrical drum and then there is idamthala player with one stick that's from the aniyaram temple we can see that he is holding only one stick and his other palm is kept over the chenda and the last one it is identified as the valamthala that's the base means the base part of base side of the instrument here we can see that uh, the player is not using his left hand is just uh, means he is just holding the instrument with the left hand and the right hand is holding the stick and uh beating the drum usually uh, the valam tala or the bass part is usually uh, done like this means the, his left hand will be not in use and only uh, he will be using only his right hand to play the instrument and the idam tala chenda player with two sticks is not seen in sculptural panels depicting uh, religious and marriage processions means only the uh, style of playing like uh, one with one hand with a stick and other hand with bare palm Uh, is shown in sculptures and the valam tala that means the base part uh, the base face of instrument is also shown uh, the first one is the parvati parinaya panel from aniyaram shiva temple here we can see that the procession is uh, led by many musicians then there is the uh, idam tala player with uh, one hand uh, means one stick in hand and the other with the bare palm and then there is the valam tala player and the next is from uh, the aniyaram uh, abittathur uh, shiva temple uh, that's the ganesha panel we can see a player beating with a stick the stick is in his left hand his and his right hand is bare and he is playing the instrument and this is a video of uh, two artists playing means uh, idam tala first the first video is idam tala where he uses stick uh, in his right hand and a bare palm in his le- means the bare palm he uses bare palm to st- uh, strike the left instrument
and the other video uh, that's the idamthala player with uh, two sticks uh, uh, you should also note the other player who is behind him he is playing the bass drum that's the valamthala and we can go to that video <laughs> So we can clearly see that the player behind him is using only one stick to play the instrument. That's the valamthala, which is also seen in the sculptures. And then there is the the one who is leading. That's the player who is using both his hands, means both sticks to play the instrument. And in, while concluding, we can the conclusions are uh, Ramana, Banasura, Suravatma, or the Asuras who play musical instruments as per Puranic text. Interestingly, all three Asuras are devotees of Lord Shiva, who is the Lord of Dance and Music. Ravana is the Asura frequently shown as playing either Baud Veena, Ravanhatha, or normal Veena. Uh, the instrument means the sculptures that think Ravanhatha uh, is usually pop means popular only in South India, and it is also popular in Sri Lanka. Uh, in some sculptures, Ravana playing Ravanhatha is also seen as uh, Sri Lanka, but the it's very scanty. Means there are only a few sculptures uh, shown portrayed as Ravana playing Ravanhatha. That's the bow instrument. There are also uh, depictions of Ravana playing normal Veena. Uh, at present, the instrument Ravanhatha is only seen in Rajasthan and Gujarat, but the literature literary reference shows that Ravanhatha was once present in Kerala. Then, according to Bhagavad Gurana, Banasura is an expert in percussion instrument, but in Mysore school, he is shown as playing stringed instruments apart from percussion instruments. In Kerala, Banasura is shown as playing a regional percussion instrument, Midava. Though referred as a musician in literature, Suryapatma playing his musical instrument, Timila, is not seen in sculptures. Uh, then, though the instrument Chanda is considered as an Asura Vadya, it is played in all types of temple rituals, both inside and outside the Nalambulam of. Kerala temples and thank you.